Okay, now this is going to be a very frightening video, and I would sincerely ask you, if you are prone to depression, don't watch this. But if you want to know what's going to be happening to our planet, then you can, uh, you can sit through this video. But seriously, if you have mental health issues, don't watch this. This can be too much even for a healthy person to deal with. Okay, this is uh, November of 2013, just this fall, and we can see uh, this is NASA. NASA has uh, published this. This is the temperature anomaly. These are temperature anomalies in centigrade. So this is the abnormal stuff compared to 1950 to 1980. And we can see Alaska <clears throat> because of the fake polar vortex created by the Gakona Harp, was really warm. It was something like 2 degrees centigrade above normal. In fact, the entire Arctic was far above normal, uh, roughly, you know, 2 degrees, looking at their, their uh, color scale. So the importance of that is, we come to this next graph, okay, uh, for some reason Noah deliberately did not look at the Arctic, what a joke. <laughs> Ocean temperature anomalies, but they don't look at the Arctic. What a joke. Okay, now, this is uh, awfully big. Let me zoom out a little. <clears throat> this is the graph that you've got to understand to understand how deadly HARP is for planet Earth. And we're going to look, uh, first we'll look at the scale, okay? The blue is the actual measured data going back to 1800s. The, uh, the red diamonds are the measured temperature in the Arctic. Okay, it's kind of bouncing all over the place. And the uh, white, white is uh, kind of the uh, runaway global warming. This is a mathematical possibility, okay? Uh, a polynomial curve fit for the the data and the blue is actual IPCC polynomial in other words a projection that the best scientists have come up with okay so let's focus down here uh, we can see I hope you can read the uh, oh, there we go in 2000, things were still, the Arctic's heating up a bunch, uh, but this white curve is uh, just kind of buried inside that Arctic data. Now let's step to 2004. Each one of these vertical lines is four years. 2004, the Arctic uh, continues to heat pretty uh, aggressively. But the global temperature is stable, nobody's getting alarmed, but the Arctic temperature is really going up fast. 2008, lots of noise in the Arctic si si signal, but now we have enough data to actually do a curve fit, and that's what they've done with the white line. But you can see the global temperature is still just, it's increasing, but it's pretty flat. Okay, 2012. Um, the Arctic temperature is continuing to go up, and global temperature is still kind of flat, although it is increasing. 2014, this is where we're at now. Uh, and this Arctic data that I just showed you, showed the, Ar the uh, Arctic is now, what, 2 degrees centigrade, so it's going to be basically at this line here. So if we look at this line here, we're, we're going to be right at this 2, or maybe a little bit above it. So, let's look at 2016. This is the present. And the thing is, we can start seeing this... Okay, I'm sorry I said that this was the runaway runaway temperature. No, that's just the Arctic. That's the Arctic temperature. I'm sorry. This white line here is the potential runaway global warming temperature. 
and we can see right now it is starting to depart from the IPCC mathematical model <clears throat> because the IPCC does not include the Arctic methane in their models or the fact that as the Arctic warms more methane is released as more methane is released the Arctic warms more etc etc it feeds on itself accelerates so let's look now at uh, 2016 2016 now we see the global runaway temperature is actually separated from the uh, IPCC estimate and the Arctic temperature is now accelerating rapidly <clears throat> because of the methane 2018 oh this is 2020 so this is only six years away we now see the runaway uh, global temperature curve starting to go up steeply 20 24 now these curves are have taken on a life of their own they're unstoppable by this point in the Arctic warming uh, the methane is now venting freely from the the shallow Laptev Sea and this is probably going to go even steeper at this point and uh, as the methane increases so will the global temperature Tw uh, 2028 at this point the globe has now warmed three and a half degrees centigrade from 1980 and the majority of mankind is dying there it's just not possible to survive for the majority of mankind so <clears throat> 2028 is what 14 years from now 14 years from now the majority of mankind is is dying entire countries and the oceans are now going anaerobic heating extremely fast and that's the actual death sentence for planet earth when the oceans go anaerobic then they start to pr produce hydrogen sulfide hydrogen sulfide is a heavy gas it's more toxic than, than cyanide gas so these low-lying communities downwind of bodies of water will be they'll just have millions of people die overnight uh, because of the this hydrogen cyanide uh, sorry hydrogen sulfide gas h2s which is many times more dangerous than cyanide gas okay 2020 uh, uh, 32 I mean 2032 these curves are now unstoppable uh, the vast majority of mankind is dead in fact anybody living at the mid latitudes is now dead it's impossible to survive the global heating has gone up five degrees centigrade the mid latitudes everything's dead and yet the Arctic is just now okay now the Arctic has fully vented its methane but now the permafrost the 24 percent of all land mass on planet Earth is permafrost the permafrost is now melting venting enormous unbelievable amounts of carbon dioxide and methane so the five gigatons has increased the five gigatons from the shallow Laptev Sea in the Arctic has increased the methane content in the atmosphere by 1,000 fold in only, you know, 20 years. 1,000 times increase. But now the permafrost is, is dumping huge, bigger amounts and other areas of the ocean are venting the methane hydrates methane clathrate so now we go to let's see 2036 2036 uh, mankind is dead at this point there'll be a very few uh, tiny settlements that are living underground that are still alive but the uh, Arctic temperature has increased about nine degrees centigrade and the global temperature is up seven degrees centigrade and now 2040 
2040, which is only 26 years from now. Uh, even the underground settlements of human beings are just struggling. The global temperature is up 10 degrees centigrade. This has not occurred on Earth for, for 55 million years. Uh, and back when that did happen, 95% of, of all living things perished. There's falling oxygen levels since the oceans are dead and they're, they're sucking down oxygen rather than producing it. There are no oxygen producers on planet Earth, except for some algae at the poles. Some plankton blooms at the poles, but even those are in jeopardy. Um, so by 2040, mankind is extinct, and planet Earth is dead. And this is the best, the only um, prediction that takes into account the Arctic methane release and the positive feedback from the Arctic methane release. And this is the end of uh, mankind and you know th this is not conjecture this is what's actually happening. Now I should mention uh, one thing here is that as global temperature departs from the IPCC predictions somewhere in here the late 2010s, there will be uh, a concerted effort to blow up one or more supervolcanoes because that at, at that point that is the only thing that can save planet Earth. The only thing is by going into a deep freeze for a couple of decades that will refreeze the Arctic. Okay, so that means the United States is dead Southeast Asia, wherever they blow up the other supervolcano, is dead. That's very, very likely that the largest nuclear weapons that can be shoved down a borehole will be uh, attempting to set off the supervolcanoes. It sounds like science fiction. I assure you, this is going to happen. This is happening now. Uh, the other thing I, I've got to point out is, what is it... You know, once once this runaway temperature starts, it's too late, right? So let's back up. Well, we're actually right. Uh, 2008, 12. We're actually right here. We are right here. So once those lines separate, it's too late. But what caused the Arctic to heat up so much? You know, going back to oh, say right about here. What's this? Uh, 1996. Well, HARP was built in the 80s. HARP was actually, the Gekona HARP was actually installed about here and started heating the Arctic by control, by cre creating artificial high pressure in, uh, west of California. And you can see what it's done. The Arctic is uh, heating six times faster than the rest of the planet because of the Gakona harp. This Gakona harp is going to kill planet Earth in 25 years, with most humans being dead in about 10 years. Okay, this is what I've been saying in the other videos, and I should have uh, shown this one first so people could take it seriously. But I challenge anyone to prove that this data is not correct. Uh, you know, even IPCC has admitted that they don't include this positive feedback data, they don't include methane release in their models, because if they did, it would be too frightening. So this is why people like Al Gore and real scientists are running around with their hair on fire. They're trying to warn people about this runaway global temperature without scaring the crap out of everybody. Well, I'm sorry, it's time to have the crap scared out of us because it's the harp, it's the Gakona harp that is triggering the Arctic temperature increase at such an incredible pace, and I think it will be even faster than that. 
once we can shut down that Gacona harp, then this process can be possibly uh, reversed or tamed. But the Gacona harp has taken a century. You know, we should have had a hundred years to deal with these problems before the Arctic started heating like it has. And the Gacona harp has taken away that century that we needed to develop the technologies. But one thing I can guarantee you is that in the summertime of 2014, you won't see hardly any chemtrailing. No, no, no. The chemtrails, the chemtrail planes are in the Arctic, trying to keep the Arctic from melting. So on one hand, the secret government is trying to stop the Arctic from melting, while another group in the secret government is running the harp to make sure that it melts as fast as possible. This is uh, a clue as to who's actually running things. And more than that I cannot say. But I hope that you can look at this graph and realize that mankind is fighting for our lives right now. For the lives of all future generations. And this harp thing in Gakona, if we don't shut it down immediately, then the Arctic methane starts melting on its own and going pure vertical. The temperature goes pure vertical. And then once that begins, the best we can hope for is, is a Yellowstone. A successful Yellowstone super volcano eruption. And that's a big old secret, but now you know. This whole, this whole chart, this is the most important chart uh, in mankind's history. And I'm telling you, we are not responsible for this. Carbon dioxide is not a horrendous gas. But once we start chemtrailing and harping so that Mother Nature cannot grow the plants to sequester that carbon in the soil, then you have runaway global warming. But that is being done to us by elements of this secret government. Okay? So you chemtrail pilots up there, you're going to be cruising over the Arctic Circle all summer. And you know because you did it last summer. And it, it did. It helped spread the, the Arctic ice. Extent was more, even though the volume was less. But you need to know that what you're doing is, is probably going to help, but what's the point? This harp transmitter is far more powerful because it controls these these low pressures that they, they can just push these giant low pressures into the Arctic. Break up all that ice you helped make and uh, make sure that the sunlight penetrates into that dark water to heat the water itself. Okay folks, this is a real bummer making this video for me. I hope that you can uh, take this to heart and do whatever you can to spread the news about the Arctic methane and the fact that the harp is being used to kill planet Earth. Okay, thank you.